Joining me now, Dave Limp, the CEO of Blue Origin, on the eve of New Glenn's maiden flight. Yeah. Such a big moment, a Huge. decade in the making. Yeah. I want to get into the details of that, but first, just the fact that we're standing inside the rocket factory. This is a rare interview inside this rocket factory. Tell me a little bit about what, what's behind us. It is an actual rocket factory, and you're seeing the main floor, which is where we build the boosters and the second stage. So we have a uh, booster number two. Obviously, booster number one's out on the pad, and I think right now we have probably seven or eight second stages in various forms of production right now, and uh, we're just trying to increase the rate of manufacturing because the, the best thing to do is to be able to build these rockets fast and in high quality, and you do that by building the machine that makes the machine, in this case, the factory. Mm, how automated is it? It's pretty automated, especially the feeder shops, because when, when you're building uh, rockets in, in a new way to lower the cost, and we have to take one or two orders of magnitude out of the cost of rockets, you have to be very vertically integrated. So we make the valves, we make the batteries, we make the avionics, and it's all vertically integrated, and it comes to the, uh, the and that's all very automated, and it comes to the fruition here in final assembly of the actual boosters. Okay, before we get to the, this milestone moment, just one more question on this, and that is, as, as New Glenn gets operational and as this factory gets fully up and running and the full, I guess, promise is realized, how many rockets will you be able to crank out of here in a year? Oh, I think we're going to be able to, uh, over time, get to 48 second stages a, a, a year. That, now, that's probably take us a couple years to get to that rate. Okay. And, you know, the boosters are reusable. So at some point, we will uh, not have to build as many boosters. But, uh, but I, I think we can do, you know, three, four a year easily, if not more. Mm. So let's talk about this key moment. As I mentioned, a decade in the making. What's at stake with this first launch of New Glenn, both for the company and also for this broader, longer-term vision of the company's founder, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, you know, we're trying to build a road to space, and to do that, we have to lower the cost, as I mentioned, to space. And there have been literally thousands of people inside of Blue working on this for the, the past eight, seven, eight years. And it's a big moment for us, you know, it, to, to be able to see the first launch here. And, you know, we're hoping to get to orbit. We would consider that a success, and everything on paper and our simulations and our tests said, say that we're going to be able to do that. Uh, but we're also audaciously trying to land the vehicle onto the barge. That would be icing on the cake if we were able to make that happen, but, uh, but we're going to give it a shot. Yeah, and, and you're flying the Pathfinder of another Blue Origin creation, which is your Space Tug Blue Ring. Um, but to your point, reusability, it's key to how this rocket of the booster, it's key to how this rocket was designed. Yeah. Um, nobody, including SpaceX, has been able to land a booster on the first try. In fact, it took them a number of years. So given the fact that this is a very ambitious goal, how confident are you in it? And how key is that realization of reusability to the business model for the rocket? Well, the reusability is absolutely critical to the business model. That's foundational, and uh, you know, even if we're not successful on this first flight, over time we'll figure out how to land it. We we land our tourism rocket, New Shepard, uh, you know, and so it, it's a tractable problem. Whether we get it right the first time, there's some new things that we can't test on the ground, and we'll see. That that being said, I, I would say that. You know, we wouldn't try to land on, on on the barge if we didn't think there was a good shot at it. You know, it's uh, I, I don't. You know, it's certainly not up there with what we think the mission's success to orbit is. But we, you know, we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot, and I guarantee excitement for sure. You know. Yeah, can't wait to watch this. Yeah. Um, this does inject New Glenn coming into the market injects a new powerful rocket into a launch market that has been largely dominated by SpaceX. How quickly can you ramp launches, and how competitive can you be? Well, I think the uh, ramping is just a function of the factories. And so, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time here. We build our engines in Huntsville. And I'm, I think in the past year, we've made a lot of progress on ramping up our manufacturing. And we have to continue to make progress each year to get to the kind of rates that we're going to need to, to, to satisfy the demand that I think that's out there for space. And as it relates to SpaceX or any other provider, I think people underestimate how big the market for space is going to be. As the price comes down, you see this in every industry, when the price comes down, innovation and demand goes way up. And so I don't think it's going to be like a sporting you know, event where there's going to be one winner here, even though that might make a good headline. I think SpaceX is going to be successful. We're going to be successful. You'll see new companies that haven't even thought up yet be successful. And I just, I, you know, personally, as a space, space enthusiast, I'm just excited that uh, space is successful in general.
So more more demand than capacity you see for the foreseeable future. Oh, that's been the case for a long time, and I think that's going to continue to be the case in the foreseeable future as people innovate in ways that we just haven't thought about. You know, if, if uh, just if you think about today that there are now thousands of satellites circling the Earth. If you had said that 10 years ago that that was going to be the new normal, you would have been called a heretic. And I think you know, in in five years hence or 10 years hence, it'll be tens of thousands of satellites. And to make that happen. And we need lots of great launch vehicles, and I think New Glenn is the top of that list. How does New Glenn unlock some of the other businesses that Blue Origin is working on, including commercial space stations and a lunar lander? Yeah, you know, most of the physics of space was solved in the late 50s and early 60s. It just was super expensive. So New Glenn becomes a foundation because it brings the price down for a kilogram to any of those locations, whether it be low Earth orbit for a space station, the moon for our lunar uh, vehicle, which you saw when you walked in the lobby today. Uh, we we want to be able to take payloads and uh, and eventually people back to the moon. And to do that, we just have to lower the cost so that we can do it over and over again in a reliable way. And it looks more like flying airliners than it does look like you know traditional aerospace in the 60s. We're a week out from inauguration. What are your expectations for space policy from the incoming Trump administration? I'm optimistic. You know, I, if you go back to the first uh, Trump administration, they did a lot of good for space. They, they, they created the Space Force. They were uh, very, very uh, proactive with the Space Council. They uh, gave the first lunar commercial contract for space through NASA. And so those, those are things that are still continuing today that have been really boons to the U.S and I think they'll, they'll continue that momentum. What's different this time around, though, is that uh, you know, one, of, one of your rivals, one of Blue Origin's rivals, SpaceX's founder and CEO, Elon Musk, has the ear of the incoming president. He's got a role in this administration through Doge. How do you navigate that? What does that mean? Well, I, you know, I think Elon has been very forthright, saying that you know, he is doing it for the public good whether it be Doge or his other work, and he's not trying to you know, put his thumb on the scale of his own private companies. And I take him at his word, and I think it's going to be great. You know, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm optimistic. So when you, when you look at all of the businesses of Blue Origin, whether it's New Glenn, New Shepard with a space tourism business, Blue Ring with a space tug, commercial space stations, lunar lander, how do you see this portfolio evolving? Where do you see the most opportunity, the most demand, both near term, long term? Well, you know, the, the mission of the company is to build a road to space for millions of people in the future. And, and that allows us to take this pristine planet we have here and turn it into, you know, uh, light industry and parks and move that heavy industry off the planet. That's generations ahead. But I feel like our opportunity here and, and the thousands of other people at Blue that we're going to build that foundation. So it means build engines that are very low cost, that are very efficient. It means build boosters that can lower the price of, of uh, uh, tonnage to any orbit or to the moon or to Mars or other planets. And if we can do that, then we, we build this foundation that allows entrepreneurs to rethink about how, sp how space can be used. And you don't have to worry about the core infrastructure anymore. You just have to worry about the applications you want to build on top of that. And that could be compute in space. That could be farms in space. That could be power in space. You know, the, the uh, ideas are endless. Is there a scenario in which Blue Origin opens up to outside investment or outside capital? I, I don't think I'm going to touch on that one, one today. We have a uh, very good uh, shareholder, one shareholder in Jeff, and he's super involved day to day. I mean, this is his full-time job, uh, so better question for him over time. You've been here, you, you came here a little over a year ago from sister company Amazon where you ran devices and services. Yeah. How has that transition been, and what have you brought from Amazon to this company in terms of culture change and, and operational change? I think, you know, maybe three things where I've tried to help a little bit on the edges here, which is, you know, first, more customer centricity. You know, as we've moved from an R&D company to a company that's delivering on services that, you know, I, I want to put the customer front and center. They are divinely discontent. Uh, they push you. you. You never satisfy them. And so putting them front and center and, and delivering on their behalf, I think, is really important. I think, secondly, decisiveness. Jeff has said he wants to make this the most decisive company in the, in, in, in the world. And so how do we add a little urgency here? How do we add some decisiveness to everything we do, make decisions faster, and, and hence move a little bit faster? And then finally, 
just become a world-class manufacturing company. I, I've said, I said it back when I was at Amazon, I said it was when I was at Apple, the, making the machine that makes the machine is often harder than making the thing itself. And so how to build a world-class factory, especially in one that's very vertically integrated, has a whole host of challenges, but I, I feel like we've made a huge amount of progress in the last 12 months. We have more to do, but I think we've made great progress. Final question for you. When you were at Amazon, you, you stood up Project Kuiper, which yeah. is the broadband satellite constellation that's being developed that will rival Starlink and others. Um, New Glenn will be used to launch some of those satellites. How quickly does that get deployed? Well, I think it's a function, uh, you know, our contracts are in place and I think it's a function for Amazon to choose when they want to do it. If we have, I, I think, one or two successful missions and we show that New Glenn is, is a viable vehicle, uh, you know, we're open for business and I, I hope that uh, Andy and, and the rest of the Kuiper team come, come a call. Well, good luck, congratulations, Godspeed. Thank you. And so great to speak to you on the eve of the maiden flight of New Glenn. Thank you, you so well. much, Dave Limp, Thanks. CEO of Blue Origin.